muito tempo a Itália é referência de muita coisa. História, gastronomia, arte e design. Talvez por isso Milão seja um imã para grandes arquitetos, decoradores, paisagistas e, é claro, designers. Eu vim até aqui conversar com o Fábio Novembre, uma autoridade absoluta nesse universo. Renaissance man of sorts. You love music. You love photography. You love uh, movies. Uh, what triggered that passion for architecture? Like, what was what's your earliest memory when you realized you wanted to work with design? Okay, good, good. So uh, before answering to the question, I say that Renaissance man. We should all try to be Renaissance man. Why? Because I believe that specialization cannot be in real life, you know, because we are multifaceted. Mm -hmm. We like so many things. Yeah. So why we have to deny some things and develop some others? I mean, let's try to develop everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So why I fell in love with architecture? Actually, it was accidental. Because <laughs> I have a little uh, problem in, uh, in the approach. I'm not able to draw. And being able to draw was essential for someone that wanted to, to get close to design or architecture. Because there were no medium, you know, there, there were no computers or other ways of... You know, and, and drawing was really not easy for me. Sure. I mean, it was not my way of, of getting comfortable in, in, in expressing myself. I've always been very visual. That's why I've always been in love with movies, you know. I, uh, I've always been a huge uh, movie fan. I got a job as an architect and uh, I mixed the two things because I studied architecture in Milano and movie direction in New York. And, but my first assignment was not a movie, it was an architecture. Mm. And I applied the two things, mixing them up, and kind of shoot a three-dimensional movie in space. Mm. The first step is the script. And you have it for movies and I use it for architecture. Write a story about what you want to develop but then apply the two cultures, mm -hmm. the visual culture from movies and the space culture from architecture. You mix them and fuck you obtain a, an explosive mix. You know, movies are very much ethereal. You know, you, you may watch them and they may change your life, but they just stay in your mind, in your dreams. We are made of flesh and blood. More and more, the, the world is becoming digital. Being an architect, relating to space, is such an important thing. Because now, I mean, I spend a couple of hours a day on Oculus, you know? So another, a virtual, yeah. a completely virtual reality. Metaverse. Uh, the metaverse, the famous metaverse. But then in the end, we are physical. Is that why you use the human body, the human, like human features in some of your work. Your chairs, your, a lot of your pieces, they resemble us of, of flesh and blood. This is one reason, the other reason is this one. Think about it. Think about most of the religions on planet Earth. The humans, if they had to visualize gods, they used to visualize them exactly like us because <laughs> they did not have a better idea of perfection. From the Greek culture, Zeus, Venus, Apollo, they all had, you know, yeah. like, men and women. Yeah. You know, I take it and make it at, at a God level, you know, so for me it's an aspiration, you know, you, it's there, perfection is there. Looking at your work, you see this, you notice this authenticity about your design. What's the birth of it? Like, what's the creative process? You wake up, you dream of a chair, you think of uh, a car, mm -hmm. and how do you go from this intelligence you're talking about to this intelligence? Mm -hmm. Authenticity and author-reality, okay? These are two different words. Authenticity for me, 
it's kind of a stupid word because you cannot uh, avoid of being authentic because you are yourself, I am myself. So that being authentic is kind of an oxymoron, you know? Mm -hmm. I can only be myself, so that I am authentic. I mean, they cannot change me. Uh, I, know Stellina, people, I know a lot of people that try to be other people. But then they break. They break. You know, sometimes people do that. But then they break in two, because they don't know who they are in the end. Yes, so that, that lasts a very short time. So let's say that everybody is itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stellina is Stellina. <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I am who I am. But let's go to um, author-reality. Author-reality means a, an original point of view. Mm -hmm. I respect and I adore authors. You know, people that say things that I never heard. So that I really appreciate a lot when, when there is this capacity of coming out with something that was never done. Yes. How does it happen? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's kind of magic. Real creators are like antennas, like aerials. You know, they perceive something that is kind of a wave in the air and they just feel it and transform it into a message. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's the spirit of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes ideas, but even big inventions, you can see that they were developed in two completely different parts of the world. You say, how was it possible? Because it's the spirit of the time. In, the, in German philosophy, it's got a, a word for itself. It's called Zeitgeist. Yep. Why it is very important? Because our mission as human beings is to testify our own time. Mm -hmm. This is very important, you know? When people say, ah, but you are very much related to the past or you are a man of the future, I always say, I'm a man of the present. Mm -hmm. Our time, you know, the moment we live is a gift. Mm -hmm. We have to live it as a gift and we have to testify and kind of visualize it and materialize it, you know? We have to take pictures of our time and uh, take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Th let's think about the humans of the Renaissance, okay? Uh, yeah. Florence of, uh, of Medici, you know? Wow, what they were able to do. Yeah. What kind of um, um, testify of their time they left to the, to the, the people that came after. Fantastic. Amazing. We should make exactly the same effort, you know? We should try to testify our time. So it's all about contemporary. It's all about the spirit of our time. You're the father of two beautiful daughters. I'm curious to know how you were raised, like how your family, your parents or one parent, yeah. uh, nurtured, cultivated this openness, this curiosity you have for so many things. I left home when I was 17. Mm -hmm. If I remember my childhood was a very quiet, happy childhood, very, really, really normal, really average. And um, if I see me and my brothers nowadays, we are so different. So that with the same ingredient, you're right, you're right to completely different results. So the DNA and the way you decide to educate yourself, that changes everything. You, I, I look at you and, and you have a lot of Italian qualities, but you talk about the world with a lot of intimacy. What's that synergy like? How, like how do places impact your work? Uh, what places inspire you? You know, I believe that when you cut your roots, when you leave the place where you were born, then your roots will always be kind of floating in the air. So that you don't really, like, for example, I've been living in Milano for, I don't know, 30 years now. I don't feel like Milanese at all. <laughs> and the more I travel, the more I see beautiful aspects of every place where I go. I've been traveling a lot all my life. And really, in every place I feel comfortable. I, I find a way of, uh, of looking at it in a perspective that I consider it like it, it's my home. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Brazil? Like, what are your thoughts on Brazil in general? I love Brazil. I mean, all the times being in Brazil, I, I, I love that place. I mean, there's so much energy. Actually. Uh, the thing I love the most in Brazil is the way you experimented the, the melting pot better than anyone else. Because really your country is a beautiful mix of cultures, of, uh, of, uh, of provenience. I mean, it's like everything 
They feel Brazilian. Gosto muito de te ver, lealzinho, caminando sob o sol. Gosto muito de você, lealzinho. Para desentristanar, lealzinho, o meu coração salta o sol. Basta encontrar você no caminho. You've had some remarkable partnerships with brands, uh, from automobiles to fashion uh, to Portobello. Uh, how do you curate who you want to work with? How do you choose what projects to take? I have a form of appreciation for the people who appreciate my work. You know, I feel so blessed by the fact that someone chose me, so that I respect them very much. I say, thank you, how can you like my work? So that the, the more they are into the things I do, the more I try to, to come toward them, you know, and to make them happy. You know, it's a form of mutual appreciation. I mean, that's how we relate to people. We don't go chase for people that hate us, you know what yeah. I mean? It, um, it creates a condition of uh, love, harmony, that really spreads out. So it, it's like, it's a, it's a positive virus that will influence all the, all the, the outer circles yes. around you. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I believe that's a good way of choosing people, you know? Mm -hmm. Love and be loved. Is there like a, something you're like, I have not done this, but I'd love to do Okay, let's put it this way. And I've been thinking so much about these things. For example, you know, you have 55 years old, you are an architect, you would say, I want to build a big skyscraper or a huge building. But in the end, even if you don't get assigned such a commitment, you don't have to care. You know, I understood really my philosophy is at my age and, and, and the, with my way of thinking. Accept any job at any scale and make the best out of it. It's not about desiring to do it bigger and taller and higher and heavier. Any, anything, any scale, put your best on it. Uh, I'm obsessed with photography. Uh, I'm a photographer myself. You. I know quite a lot about photography. Yeah. I know you do, and you've worked with Steve McCurry. I know that you have the poster here. What was that like? What is it like curating a style of art that may inspire you, but that it's not your official profession? I'm curating the concert of a friend, which you know it deals with music and the, and the uh, experience from stage to the audience. I mean. Everything is creativity to me, and so that really, and everything is about space and people. So that the ingredients are all the same. Photography is exactly the same thing, you know. You have to catch the moment. When you when you talk to someone creative, really, you 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 immediately find a way of understanding each other and uh, and uh, eventually sharing a goal, you know. And me and Steve were sharing a goal when we did the the show together. When we think about the past. Uh, you know, Italians, Egyptians, when we think about art and architects from the past, they left a legacy that we can touch, that is physical. Um, now, part of our lives is digital, it's in the metaverse, it's online. Um, do you think we'll be able to leave behind a legacy as well? Of physicality? Yeah. I think we already left so much physicality around us. You know, at the times of the Romans, the Greeks, the, the Egyptians, there were not so much physicality in the, in the whole world. So that in some ways, it, it was good to preserve traces. Humans are, are really evolutionists in the sense that they don't much respect the past. I mean, if you see how cities are built, they are, you know, layers one on top of each other, you know? So that, that's how life goes. I mean, but really, let's, let's accept it. Plus, really, we are leaving such a, you know, so much traces of our passage in, in the world. I mean, if we disappear tomorrow, the whole planet will benefit from it, you know? I mean, I mean you don't last much. You last eventually the, the time when you are alive, a few years later, that's it. 
come on, another one. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, and if you're you, an architect, you're gonna be no, 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 forget about it. No, forget about it. After you die, they're gonna be in sincerely, home. sincerely, forget about it. Memory is getting shorter, shorter True. and shorter. True. So that's it. Let's accept it. I mean, we don't want to to live forever, even in in, in the memory of people. So that. Let's just forget about it. I Let's mean, just enjoy it's okay. Now this it's gift. okay. It's okay. This is a gift. Let's enjoy it. I mean, really, if you wanna, you know, live forever in the memory of, of the people, you know, it's such an ego trip. I, I don't like it. I mean, what for? What for? Dust. Let's see it. Okay, good. Well, I've enjoyed this gift. I've enjoyed this present moment. Thank you so much. It was, it was really enjoyable. Thank you very much.